are you entirely membership supported or have you do you have network of i mean i know you have member schools uh individual members uh and and i i think i recall you might have gotten some grant funding what's your what's your overall business model <laughs> all, all, all of that we basically yeah. our business model is we get the money from where we can uh -huh. <laughs> so People do have memberships. They do pay for memberships. But if people can't afford memberships, we still find a way to get them involved, mm -hmm. uh, especially people from developing countries and things right. like that. And so we have people all over the world who are joining. And yeah, if they can afford, it's very cheap to begin with anyway, right. but, but it's $100 for the year. You know, and among other things, if you're a school, for example, or organization, and you have memberships and people pay for that, well, just think about it. You know, if you're, we link to you from our member page. Right. So if you're like an independent alternative school and you get one student who's going to pay $25,000 for the year, you're set for the next century or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's, it's one of the ways we do it. Another is we do, do get some grants. Peter just got a grant from a foundation for us, and we've done that. We don't do that too often. We haven't done much mm -hmm. of that. This is nice. And we also get support from people who go to our conferences. Right, right. You know, and so these are some of the ways that, you know, that we keep going. Right on. Yeah. Right on. And, I, you know, we also have sustainers which is kind of a different type of, a little bit of different type of membership. We do have sponsors, you know, people who actually uh, Antioch University is one of our sponsors. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's different layers of sponsorship, which if anybody's interested, they can contact us and we can take them through the different layers. But basically sponsorship gets you, you know, banners on our, our website and our conference mm -hmm. site. It gets you consultations with us, you know, registration at the comp, you know, again, there's a lot of different tiers, so I don't want to go into all of it, but I mean, right, there's, right. there's, there's that way as well. And like Jerry said, the conference, um, you know, is something, you know, we try to keep costs as low as we can. So as many people as possible can access the conference and we do, you know, we work with people who, you know, need a different rate for whatever reason, mm -hmm. but we do try to generate a, you know, at least some amount of revenue from the conference as well. Right. And then again, you know, like Jerry said, this, the, the, the alternative starters course, and uh, we're actually working on some new courses coming up and things like that. So, so it's just a lot of, I think the, to diversify the model and, and, you know, have as many revenue streams as you can. And mm -hmm. I would say that's what we encourage any alternative that's going to right. get started is to really diversify right to get out there and yeah tuition is great and that that's that's a great thing but but there's also other things and i think that's a really big issue right now is the sustainability mm -hmm. of alternatives and i know that's right. we're actually going to have a, a whole panel on that mm -hmm. at the conference and we do have individual workshops that are kind of addressing that as right, well right. so let's just add a few more for example we have a bookstore and right right we sell, we sell books and we sell things from the bookstore and I do consultations that goes to support arrow a lot of the times people would just call up and we'll, I'll tell them what I know before we make it into a concert <laughs> right right oh that's it okay bye <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy to do that because our we're nonprofit right and so as Peter said people do donate to us we do have these sustainers but 75 or so that give something every month. Mm -hmm. Sustainers actually get into the conferences free. Right on. So, yeah, we have a lot of different ways that we manage to uh, to keep going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think it's actually, you know, so so the first Aero conference I went to, the first three were here in Portland <laughs> because that was, that's, you know, home base for me. Uh, but then, you know, came all the way to New York this last year. So that was that was really wonderful. But I think that it's really your bookstore is a particularly interesting resource because it is covering such a an interesting niche in education. Because there are a it's, lot of books and things that we have that nobody else has. Exactly. Exactly. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that's a really valuable thing that that may get overlooked sometimes. 
and, and it becomes really obvious when, when, you know, you're actually at the conference and you can see the table of books and you go, wow, okay. <laughs> I think that's a really nice aspect of it. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.